Dogumentary TV, producing the best breed documentaries on YouTube. My name is Alexandra Flanagan, also known by Sandra, and I um, have been in labs, rather, uh, since 1989. Started out with one, one Labrador as a breeder to show the dog and ended up doing field work. So I had my training, early training, with field work. Uh, was able to place a junior hunt title on that uh, yellow Labrador in those days and learned a lot from her. And from there, I grew to two or three more Labradors over the next few years. And again, continued to do both the show ring and doing some field work. In the latter years, I've only been able to do like working certificates. It's too rugged for this old lady to go tromping around in the ponds. Um, but uh, most of the dogs um, have, have gone through and got their working certificate to show that they still have that innate ability, in, you know, to, to bring in the ducks and go to the pond and swim back. The working certificate is only a one-shot trial. You go to a couple of practices and uh, throw bumpers or um, live-shot birds, and you do a bit of training, and then you have a judge at a do different show. You take the dog, and they uh, judge the dog's ability to do a land retrieve and a water retrieve, and um, you're, that's the working certificate. It's just a beginner level. It's the first rung of the ladder. Um, that's the fun part about having Labradors, is doing the, the things they were bred to do. Um, it, we people kind of spoil ourselves with confirmation and our ego, we have the prettier dog, and, uh, and getting the championship on them, you know, the show champ for conf confirmation. But the true fun is taking them out and working them in the field. The breed standard um, would be the measurements, the coat, the tail, the head, the structure to conform so that they can do the work of retrieving and going in and out of the water. And uh, if you go back, the head should be pleasing and um, the ears should not exceed past their eye, the corner when you pull, so there's a balance to the head. The muzzle should equal the length up into their forehead and in into the back of the skull. Um, so it's in proportion. The coat on the dog is a double coat. Um, there is an undercoat and an outer coat, and that's what makes them the true Labrador, and you really need to show that to the judge, or the judge will find it in the show ring. But that's what's their insulation um, and their original job of pulling the fishing nets um, and the cold water of Labrador up in Canada. And uh, that's, that's, that's what they were bred to do, and so therefore they have to have that coat. Uh, level top line, tail set off the back and continuation to the spine, not up like an antenna. It is the rudder in the water and that's the, the form that they will steer by. The web feet is another uh, trait of the Labrador. Um, the standard on height, uh, the girls are about uh, 21 and a half to 23 inches at the withers, the shoulders, and the boys can go 22 to 25 inches at the, at the, shoulder, at the shoulders. The history of the Labrador Retriever, um, it actually uh, originated in Labrador in Canada. And there was, was two breeds, the greater Labrador being the Newfie, the lesser being the Labrador Retriever as we know it today, a little bit smaller today. Um, and they were discovered by the British uh, while they were using them on fishing boats in Canada. They took them back to Britain and actually grew the breed out, so for confirmation and show, and also sought the value of hunting with them. Once the British uh, uh, encountered the breed in Canada and saw the function of the water and the, the retrieving ability, um, the big sport in Britain is to go hunting for pheasant, and therefore they thought this would be a fabulous dog, hunting pheasants, at the lord of the manor. Oh. It was the people who could afford 
uh, to have guests and have a fleet of dogs uh, that um, they actually had kennel masters that worked these dogs and continued to breed them and hone them uh, to what we have today. And um, so I, even though they are a Canadian dog, I attribute Britain to nurturing what we have today. Uh, after the uh, British got a hold of this dog <laughs> and uh, found the attributes that it could do, uh, it started to spread throughout Europe. And so you find Labradors in many, many countries with different functions. But um, the main thing is hunting. The main, the main goal is to hunt. There are the three most common uh, dogs that uh, you'll find at a field training facility like I've gone to would be a golden retriever, a flat-coated retriever, uh, and your Labrador. And the differences between them, it, it can be very vast. Um, the other retriever who supersedes all of these guys would be your Chesapeake Bay Retriever too. Um, they're also in the mix. The Labrador is built like a boat. The uh, front of the chest between the shoulders uh, has what we call a keel. And that's what plows through the water. That's, they are uh, probably the stronger of all of the dogs. Probably even, even Stephen with uh, the um, Chesapeake Bay Retriever, and they, they can move through the water quite fast too. But uh, when they jump in, they jump in full force like somebody just dropped the boat into the water. They're a great house pet, um, the Labrador, because they uh, want to please. That's their, their whole goal. That's why they make such good therapy dogs, guide dogs. They just, they love people. And they're actually very easily housebroken. Um, they can be a real pest sometimes because they feel that they are a little dog and they're not a little dog. And so that, you know, if you jump in bed, you look by and here's three of them laying in your bed and you're going, but I have to get in here too. So they are great. They're great with children. Um, they're great uh, with older people too. They just have a sense about them, um, a compassion. It's, um, it's, it's beautiful to watch. They're a great dog for a family. The Labrador needs a yard, um, apartments, condos, uh, that's 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 a no-no uh, on my list as far as uh, what uh, I can where I would like to put my dogs. I don't care if it's a small yard, but they need a yard. And if they don't have that, then you have to have access to a park where you can get out and walk them and walk them and um, and uh, exercise them. Um, but they love to lay out in the backyard and they love um, the outdoors. And it's just it's just they're just too big a dog for a condo or an apartment. I've uh, only had to take back puppies a couple of times where the people have, I call it, failed uh, to get this dog to adapt. And both times, it was one was a condo and one's an apartment, and they were not truthful with me, and I ended up having to re rehome the puppy. But um, they just don't understand. You can't lock them up in a, an apartment uh, for the day and go to work. Uh, they need their yard. They need a yard. The ideal owner for a Labrador Retriever would be someone who's outdoorsy, active, uh, maybe likes to go hike or even walk every day. Uh, they make a great walking companion. Uh, the other is uh, if you've got children and you're taking them to the park, uh, dog goes with, you know, and uh, becomes the other child. That's what they are. They become part of the family. They're another, another, another member. And they love to be part of it you know, involved with the kids. So it would be someone that uh, takes the time to include the dog in a lot of their activities as much as they can. The grooming needs, uh, that's a joke. <laughs> um, my favorite thing is someone says, do you have uh, to bathe them and brush them and do the daily, weekly, whatever? And I look at them and go, no, because when you're showing your Labrador, the last thing you want to do is rake through and draw that coat out. Uh, the, the double coat has to be there. And so my favorite thing to do is a week or two before the show, have them swim in the pool and let the chlorine clean their coat out and then take them to the show two weeks later. Uh, no brushing, no blowing, no nothing. Just let it be clean, let it lay down and have the two coats right there so that the depth of the coat can be felt by the judges. 
The breed temperament on a Labrador should be very uh, pleasant, gentle, and pleasing. Um, if you have one that growls, it should be corrected and stopped right away um, and told this is not uh, acceptable behavior. So they should be very pleasing, cuddly, and warm, and very tolerant, and that's why they're so good with children. Socialization is very important, and it has to be done at the right time or the window of opportunity, just as you have with children and teaching them different things. With the uh, puppies, um, the best opportunity to start the training is when they complete all of their shots. Um, I, I drill that home because I don't want the health endangered. As far as training a Labrador Retriever, uh, obedience, um, I recommend that at six months. Um, around the same time that you're doing the socializing, if you have the right instructor and the proper information being passed to you, it's uh, uh, a great time to be trained yourself because the teacher is training you on how to train your dog. It's a, you're the middle guy. And so it, once you learn um, the repetitions of the correction or the praise, um, then you make a, a, a great, great uh, trainer with your puppy. There were many health issues when I started in Labradors 29 years ago. Uh, fortunately, science which is in my background, is growing and learning all the time. And we have found um, ways now to DNA, x-ray, do all of the testing to find out some of these. And one of them was hips and elbows. Um, and we know that genetically it's being passed on. And so if we can x-ray and certify through the Orthopedic Foundation our hips and our elbows and get them numbered, um, and we do it for three or four generations, we know we're going to produce healthy and sound dogs. In my puppy pack, the most important thing that I go through with them is the hips and the elbows and the eyes. And those are the things that keep that dog viable. Um, that being said, when I release that puppy, it's only eight weeks old. And the scary part is that the environment they're going to, I'm not in charge anymore. And my biggest concern is allowing a puppy to jump from a sofa down or a table and down. If the kids leave it somewhere and it jumps down, you can damage all of the cartilages and soft tissue that are holding those bones together are still very, um, uh, they're immature and still growing. And uh, they need time to mature. And the taking a dog running and jogging to excess at a young age is a no-no. You've got to allow them to grow. They don't hit puberty till 12 months. And uh, so in between that time they go home to about 12 months, it should be house and family and nice walks, swimming, low, low impact, low impact, and allow the dog to grow. Uh, life expectancy is anywhere from 10 to 12 years, but some of us are getting very good at breeding and uh, the average on mine is running anywhere from uh, 14 to 16. I lost three of them this last two years at 16 and um, I've gotten calls from clients uh, and they were just beside themselves. Their dog made it to 14 and did well, you know, did well. So that that's that's kind of a real bonus is to see see us push that out a little bit longer because they don't live long enough. We, you know, they get into your heart and you think, my gosh, can, how am I going to exist without this, this dog? You know, their life is so short. So it's nice to see the longevity. Drummer, and he's a yellow male, and he just turned five at Christmas. Um, he is a finished show champion. And on top of that, he has his grand championship and he also has won, um, he did last year win the Southern Cal specialty. So he's won in competition against all Labradors, not just other breeds of dogs. Uh, he also has his working certificate. And he also, now and again, he does have his good citizens, canine good citizen, but I think he forgets. <laughs> he gets a little rambunctious. And the other gal, her name is Piper. She is a black female. She just turned eight. And she also has her working certificate. And she hasn't been shown that much. And she is from Sweden. She was an import brought to me. 
Uh, lovely dog, great girl, very, very smart. Um, the breeder in Sweden uh, has 50 years of genetic uh, testing and breeding and a lot of hunting in the line. As I had stated earlier, 29 years I've had an affair with this uh, breed. Um, I've loved them since I was growing up in Canada. I had, my father had one when I was 10 years old. Two years ago, I actually was president of the Southern Cal Lab Club, and um, so now I'm retired. I'm sitting back watching all of the, uh, the new people get involved and carry the torch. Uh, it's been a wonderful journey, and I love the breed, and I love the people. Uh, the personality of most of these people that I associate with are like the dogs, very pleasing. And so it, it's like an extension of your family.